As you are now no doubt aware, a number of previously copyrighted works have recently entered the public domain from January 1st, actually. The original Peter Pan, Tigger from the House at Pooh Corner, Charlie Chaplin's The Circus, Eric Maria Remarque's All Quiet on the Western Front, and most famous of them all, Disney's Steamboat Willie, which features the first version of Mickey Mouse. There are other works that have also entered public domain this week, but these are some of the big ones. Steamboat Willie is most interesting because Disney have done basically everything in their power legally over the decades to extend the life of that IP. They've owned it for 95 years, which is, in my view, just crazy. Now, it's worth noting that the current iteration of Mickey Mouse is unaffected. It still belongs to them, and their trademark the classic Mickey Mouse Disney ears, that silhouette of Mickey Mouse, that is something that permanently belongs to them because trademarks are different to copyrights. But what's happened here is that only the original 1928 black and white Steamboat Willie cartoon and its characters have entered the public domain. Only that particular design. So the current version of Mickey Mouse will remain as the official Disney mascot for for some time to come. This has been a long time coming, however. Now, if we go back to the original Copyright Act of 1909 in the United States, that permitted works to be copyrighted for 56 years, which would have meant that the 1928 Steamboat Willie character would have been in the public domain by 1984. But just a few years before that, Disney lobbied for the Copyright Act of 1976, which extended copyright for characters created before 1978 to 75 years, which meant that Disney would retain ownership of Steamboat Willie up to 2003. But of course, once again, as that date drew near, Disney had that extended by lobbying Congress for the 1998 Copyright Extension Act, and that brought us up to 2024. Anyway, it's been a totally ridiculous situation to get this far. Keep in mind that if the original copyrighted laws had remained in place without all of the lobbying over the years, without all of the extensions, many comic book characters, stories, and even franchises, the likes of Star Trek, for example, would already be in the public domain now. Most of the big name superhero characters as well, tons of films and TV shows and books would already be in the public domain. And it wasn't just Disney doing all the lobbying either. Lots of other big corporate media and studios have wanted such extensions and benefited from them over the years. Now, as I say, if copyright laws hadn't been continuously extended, many big properties would have already been out there for everyone to use. Now, what's going to happen over the next few years is that more and more Disney characters will enter public domain. Initially, only the original versions of them, because their characters have undergone major design changes over the years. But gradually, newer versions will enter public domain as well as the years go on. So the reason why this is so important is because when something enters the public domain, it can now be used by anyone. It can be adapted for commercial use because no one owns the copyright to it anymore because the copyright has expired. Now, DC's Superman is due to enter public domain sometime around 2034. Again, this assumes that there's no new copyright extension law introduced between now and then. So that would mean that uh, that the Action Comics issue number one, that's the first time Superman appeared, that would enter public domain. It doesn't mean that every single Superman character or villain or storyline will be public domain, just the content of that particular issue. And then chronologically, over time, as the years go on, more issues will also enter public domain. The character of Batman first appeared in Detective Comics number 27 in 1939. That version of Batman might also enter public domain around 2034. Now on the Marvel side, Captain America first appeared in 1940, and he will be public domain around 2035 or 2036 Spider-Man first appeared in 1962, so he probably won't be public domain till 2057 or so, somewhere around then. Again, you would only be able to base your version of these characters based on their first appearance, not based on how they currently appear right now, because more recent versions of those characters are still protected 
by copyright. So let's say Star Trek was to enter the public domain. It's going to be around the 2060s, at least by current copyright laws. Uh, that would mean that the first episode of Star Trek, specifically the unaired pilot, The Cage, would be public domain. So you could write and produce stories and films based on Captain Pike, Spock, Number One, The Enterprise, and the planet Talos IV, I suppose. Only the stuff that was in that episode. Uh, then maybe a year or so later, the original series' first season would follow, then season two, season three. Uh, a little over ten years after that, uh, you'd be able to make stories about V'ger and the updated Enterprise from the motion picture feature film. The first episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation wouldn't be public domain until around the early 2080s, I think. Uh, I obviously won't live to see that myself. Now, of course, I'm only quoting US law. Copyright laws differ across the world. Regardless, the laws are similar insofar as they, they're just way too long as far as I'm concerned. But it's crazy that there's so many examples of corporations that own the rights to properties they didn't create, and in some cases, the creators are long dead. Imagine what would happen if lots of the big franchises of today were already in the public domain. That would mean that writers, independent filmmakers, could produce works based on these creations. Not like fan films, they would actually be able to make money off of them, and as a result, would be able to expand upon them. Imagine the amount of new jobs that could be created. No longer would these popular properties be contained within the walled garden of a single IP owner. They would be set free for anyone to reimagine them. And while some interpretations wouldn't be as good as others, obviously, there would be nevertheless some great new takes on old characters and stories that could be miles better and more creative than the official copyrighted ones we're currently getting from the big corporate giants of today. But we can't wait decades for all of these great TV shows, films, stories and comic book characters to be finally liberated from corporate control. If anything, this situation only further serves to underline that we have to create our own great properties and characters that capture the imagination in the same way, which would also be protected in terms of copyright for about 95 years, it seems. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.